What is going on and welcome to another Full Wheel Drive Talk episode in friends. Yeah, I'm still out of my studio, which is a good thing. Matter of fact, if you've, well, depending upon when some of these videos go live, you'll know that I'm in Abilene, Texas right now. Yeah, far away from home. Uh, out with the folks with Better Outfitters. And the fun part about this is if you've seen some of the recent videos that we've done here recently, I've been out here playing around with some pretty cool overlanding gear. Now, last week, we reintroduced the Trucks and Coffee, or well, kind of going with that name. Um, and while out here, I noticed Hunter Hansen here, one of the owners with uh, Better Outfitters, had this cool, amazing overlanding rig here. And I asked him if it was okay if we could take a few minutes in interview because Trucks and Coffee, what is it all about? Cool rigs. I shared with uh, you guys last week, well, again, depending upon when this episode goes live, I've always been a car guy, love cars, and one of my favorite things back in the day was going to Cars and Coffee. Cars and Coffee is a lot. Do you guys have Cars and Coffee out here? No, no, uh, <laughs> no Cars and Coffee. We 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 are around lots of Cars and Coffee. <laughs> so I mean, we're we're out in. I mean, Abilene. This is a this is now. Wait, how the major cities that are near here is Dallas. We are kind of we're not too far from most of the big cities so we're on the interstate about two and a half hours west of dallas fort worth we're about three hours north of austin three hours south of lubbock two hours west of us is midland so we're kind of in the middle of a lot of the bigger cities so you're right in the, the heart of everything yeah. yeah that's cool yeah oh we these back in the day used to well i they still have them. i just have not been to it but cars and coffee so you would have hundreds of people out there with yeah. their cars their hoods open and it's always fun to go around smoking and joking and talking about cars it's always fun to see how other people have their rigs or well their cars we're talking rigs now yeah. how they have things set up and when i saw this i'm like man hunter please buddy yeah. can we do this so anyway folks as uh, as always we put these videos together this is for, you can look at this as educational, entertainment, heck, we're gonna crack this thing open and see what he has done. And friends, I can share with you right now, I've had a sneak peek and it's pretty darn cool. Now, as always, we put these videos together for you, so if you find some value with this video, friends sure would appreciate. There's that YouTube, uh, well, there's that like button down below and the YouTube algorithm really digs it and heck, so do we. That said, pull up seat and hey, it's time, let's go. All right, Hunter, so really appreciate you taking time out of your schedule yeah. to be able to allow me to crank on these cameras and talk about your van. But before we get going with this here, for the audience, can you share with them a little bit about who you are? So yes, I'm Hunter Hanner. Um, we have grown up in the car business, so we are car people. And hobby-wise, we just love the outdoors, so we camp we hunt fish hike snow ski bike we just if we're if we've got free time we want to be outside and i have a family i've got four kids and a lovely wife and they all enjoy the outdoors with us so that that's kind of me in a nutshell you guys are the real deal <laughs> and there's a bunch of us <laughs> <laughs> so this van now this thing caught my eye yesterday and again we spoke about this how to get it on the show here talk to us a little bit about what this is so this started out as a standard extended length cargo van and some of it was trying to figure out what is the best rig for a family of six to be able to get out and enjoy the outdoors so we went down the rabbit hole, we started trying to figure it out, but we started with a cargo van, and then we sent it to our buddy Derek at Colorado Camper Van, and they do the pop tops, and that was kind of the, the aha moment of, oh, we can actually make a camper van that we can take wherever we wanna go, sleep six people, and so sent it to him, got the pop top, 
started with the interior conversion and then it's just been kind of add this, add this and go from there. You mean you tell me this top goes up on this it thing? It does, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it lifts up and there's a bed the whole length of it and that's the kid's bed and we throw them all up there and me and mom sleep in the fold down sofa in the back. So we're going to... We're going to shift gears here a little bit. We're going to do something fun here. Let's jump in the Wayback Machine. Let's go back to the day, the very morning that, Hunter, you decided to pick this thing up and build this quite customizable van here. What was the original inspiration for doing so? The original inspiration was, I mean, we talked, we'd be going on vacation, me and my wife, and we'd be in the front seat trying to figure out, okay, what do we want to do? Do we want to buy a towable? Do we, how do we, what's the best setup for our family with what we like to do? And we finally, when we figured out you could do a pop top and that we could make a van sleep six people, like that's perfect because if you go camping with six people and you like to mountain bike or you want to take the kayaks, you're taking five or six of everything. And so with this, we can pull a trailer We've got a little utility trailer and we can put the kayaks on it, we can put the bikes on it, and so it's just <laughs> kind of the mobile adventure wagon. So now this is a this is a 22, right? Yes. And so in a minute, you keep bringing up that pop top. So we, we're going to have to, friends, don't worry, I'm going to get it on camera, this thing going up here. And this is four wheel drive? Yes, so with GM, you can, when you order a van, you can do a ship through through Quigley up in Pennsylvania, and they're the ones that actually convert it to four wheel drive and all wow. covered under warranty and all that good stuff. That's amazing. Now, look, before we take a deeper dive into some of the mods that you've done here, can you share with the audience? Now, would you consider this to be more set up for a as an overlanding rig or for off road? We we're set up. I mean, we're not ones that are going to plan on going like rock crawling or rock anything crawling. crazy in it, but we wanted something set up, yes, where we could overland, go off road. If we want to go to the primitive campsites in the national parks or BLM land, that we're not limited on where we can go. So yes, it's a go anywhere rig, but probably we're not going to do anything crazy extreme like rock crawling or anything. That, that's, that's not our gig. That's not our gig. I was noticing this thing has some pretty serious clearance on it as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. This thing's a tank. I Absolutely. I've seen a lot of vans and uh, this thing really looks well. And actually, speaking of which, can you talk to us a little bit about some of the mods that you've done to this thing? Yeah. So like I said, the first, first thing that happened was we sent it to Derek at Colorado Camper Van. They put the pop top on it, and then they converted the interior to camper van. So it's got sink, it's got the inverters, the electrical, the, the heater that's running out of the fuel tank using the fuel from the van. We get it back from them. Well, then our wheelhouse with automotive connections and all that stuff, we start doing all the exterior stuff. So started with bumpers and then we've done a lot of suspension work <laughs> and wheels tires lights and and there's still some stuff that we're going okay we can we need to add this need to add this so. okay we, we got to go back to the suspension stuff here i'm not gonna friends do you know and you'll see i'll put some b-roll over the talking bit here right here this is not just just suspension you have that's that suspension there is next level yeah, so can we talk a little bit about the i saw some coilovers I, it looked like you had some new sway bars underneath there what's going on underneath there so with the gm van stuff the we did a lot of look in and i mean we're figuring out okay what what product do we want to use to put on this thing and we have lots of connections in the automotive world but there's some guys out of California, the Weld Tech guys, and that's their wheelhouse is the GM vans, and they do this custom coilover <laughs> stuff in the front end. It's pretty wicked. It's crazy. This thing really is funny because when you're talking about being able to get to the, some of the primitive sites, the back of my head, I'm thinking, yeah, they, I've seen I've seen the suspension that you have on this here, and uh, yeah, you guys can do a lot more than primitive yeah. campgrounds with it, this. Do you happen to remember the very, when you picked this thing up, what was the first mod that you put on it? First thing that happened was it went to Quigley and got four wheel drive. 
and then the second stuff was working through the pop top because I mean the pop top was the game changer for us. So mm-hmm. That was that was the first thing we did because we knew without that we can't we can't all go camping. We weren't yeah. we weren't all going to fit in it. So. And actually, that leads into one of my questions I had. Out of all the mods that you've done on this here, which do you think has been the most has has given the most impact to how you use this van? Yeah. With us, I mean, since we're family camping, and and I mean that's one of the big things because we're planning on we're going to carry these vans like this and at the better outfitters, but so many vans, the camper vans, and that's what me and my wife are running into. They're only set up to sleep two people, and so the game changer for us is the pop top because we want to go as a family, and the pop top is what enables you to sleep kids and the extra friends family if you want to go camp so now the clarity things are crystallizing for me you built this with the purpose to treat it as a test mule to iron out or kind of refine that process with this so therefore you guys will offer got it so you guys are going to be once you have this all ironed out you guys are going to be offering this. this this was kind of the guinea pig and it it's probably a little overkill than what a lot of the customers may do but it's like okay we're going to show people how far you can go but yes the plan is to offer camper vans that are four-wheel drive all-wheel drive with the pop tops where you can go sleep more than two people or you can go camp with friends and family so how will that work so will somebody be able to come to you and let's say they can make a decision based upon budget or they can make the decision based upon they want to go over overlanding or use it as a as a rock crawler or some sort so what we'll do we've got the chassis connections with our new car store so we'll have a pretty steady flow of chassis that are getting the interiors and the pop top conversions done and then as they start flowing into the store that's where you'll be visiting with the customer on okay how crazy you want to go what are your plans on using it and that's where we'll start figuring out because we can do all the suspension exterior stuff at our shop. Okay, so that all, all of this is making a lot more sense here for me. So you still, I'm going to ask this next question because you, of the sounds of it, you've gone, th- you've tested a lot. Uh, you've seen what work, what doesn't work. Yeah. Um, so is there a mod? If you could do all the mods over again, would there be a mod that you would not put back on? At this point, there hasn't been one that you're like, man we screwed up bad there has been some learning curves as far as how much modification has to be done like that front end i mean that's a very extreme front end (laughs) setup and and we've learned we're like that's probably overkill for how a lot of customers will use their use their vans especially if you're going family camping and not rock crawling and stuff but at this point there hasn't been one i've regretted there's there's been lots of stuff that's been learning experiences and taking longer to figure out and stuff like that. Now, what are, you know, when I look at this, especially, you know, hearing a few things that you've just mentioned right here, I'm like, okay, what else could you possibly do to this thing here? But what plans do you have for this? Um, it has grown and grown and grown as it's got the suspension work and the tires and stuff. So I'm pretty sure my wife is going to want a set of steps on it. Mm. And then the other thing, like we were camping down in Big Bend over Thanksgiving, and Big Bend's notorious. I mean, people go there because it's dark at night. I mean, Mm. real dark at night. (laughs) And we've got the front lighting, but we've got to get some more lighting on this thing, side lights, some of that for camping. So lights and the the step sides of some sort. It's pretty good step up there right now to get in it. So, all right, so now we're going to shift gears here a little bit, Hunter. We're going to go into what's called the speed round. So I'm going to ask you five questions. You're going to give me five quickish answers. Okay. So how often do you take this out? We try and go at least once a month. What is the strangest thing you've seen on the trails? The strangest thing we've seen on the trail so far is, I mean, when we're driving, we love wildlife. I mean, I grew up just loving the outdoors. So we were driving the other day and we we pulled off on a random road and we're like, it's a dirt road. And we're like, well, let's go down this road, see where it goes. And we got going and we were driving through some stuff and it had some big mountains with some cliff faces. 
and there was a whole bunch of uh, sheep just uh -huh. standing there. I mean, they're, they're walking <laughs> on one of those deals that's just straight vertical. And we had the kids in the car, and so we just stopped, and it was fascinating just watching the sheep climb on that cliff. You know, there's a video on, on YouTube where they show this goat on the side of this, like, dam, and you look at it, it's like almost a vertical. Yeah, you're vertical. like, how is this <laughs> yeah. on? You're like, there's nothing to step on. I have no idea how they do it, but it's yeah. it's amazing, and uh, I'm not one for height, so I look at it, I'm like, yeah, uh, go. You're like, one wrong step, <laughs> you're done, dude. So, if any mod hunter could magically appear, like, voom, onto your van right now, no cost to you, what would that be? Full lighting all the way around. Good switch panel. Nice. Yeah, more lights. Is there such thing as a perfect tire size? And if so, what is it? I would say something in that 33, 34 inch range. I, we've done 35s, but they get pretty, pretty big. You Heavy too. Gearing and fuel mileage and everything else. But 33, 33 and a half on these vans, that's a nice size. Do you have a off-road pet peeve i don't like it when people are in a rush so if you're going down the cool road and you're enjoying the scenery and the guy gets right on your rear and you're like man like we're enjoying taking our time or blows by you going 100 miles an hour but <laughs> yeah i don't like the people that are in too big of a rush Final question, um, a lot of the viewers that may be watching this may be just getting into overlanding, may be getting into off-road and not quite sure where to start. What advice can you give to them? Try and figure out what, what you want your rig capable of going and doing. Because if you know, look, we're gonna just be happy staying on the maintained forest roads you may not need this much ground clearance and stuff, but if you want to be able to go rock crawling in your rig, you may need to go even farther <laughs> than this. But no, no, you don't want to be limited on the places you can go and what you can see by your vehicle or if you're pulling a trailer by your trailer. So that that's what I would say is have a game plan on this is the kind of stuff we like to do and then you'll figure out, okay, what capabilities does my vehicle, does my trailer need to have? Very good. Well, Hunter, friend, thank you yes. very much for yeah. giving me a few moments and sharing with the audience a little bit more about your van. And you folks, that is it for another Trucks and Coffee episode. This was a lot of fun. Now, before we go shutting things off here, friends, there, I'm gonna ask you to do all that YouTube stuff because we really do appreciate it. So, if you haven't already, please consider hitting that like button, the subscribe button, and hell, why not consider hitting all notifications so every single time that we come out with a video just like the one that you just watched here, well, YouTube's gonna do its whole notification thing and send you out some sort of heads up that we came out the video. But that said, friends, we're gonna be shutting off the camera so you get out there, stay healthy, and find your adventure. <laughs>